in the first part of the lecture on gamoj theory of alpha decay actually we have seen some of the introductory facts regarding this theory in fact uh, you have seen that uh, <coughs> the alpha particle of uh, alpha particle is confined in the nucleus and the nucleus is treated just like a potential well and uh, the height of the uh, potential barrier which is faced by the alpha particle is almost of 25 mega electron volt to 28 mega electron volt slightly differing from nuclei to nuclei but uh, the alpha particle has a kinetic energy which ranges from 4 mega electron volt to 9 mega electron volt and so the alpha particle according to classical physics will be surmounted uh, through this uh, wall only when the energy of the alpha particle will be uh, 25 mega electron volt to 28 mega electron volt but as its energy lies between 4 mega electron volt to 9 mega electron volt so classic according to classical physics the alpha particle will just rebound from the wall of the nucleus and so it cannot escape from the nucleus in one sentence you can say that uh, classically it is very hard or it is impossible to explain how this alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus so classical physics badly fails in explaining the alpha decay process but uh, in 1928 three scientists gamo and uh, garni and condon in fact uh, independently explain this alpha decay process by the use of quantum mechanics what is the main basic fact on which this theory proposed by particularly gamo is based upon i have mentioned it here you can see in fact the basic notions of this uh, gamo theory of alpha decay are following first of all we say that an alpha particle exists as an entity within the uh, heavy nucleus it means if you consider that inside the heavy nucleus there are nucleons that is protons and neutrons so in fact two protons and uh, two neutrons actually two protons and two neutrons form a system which is alpha particle and in this theory it is assumed that this uh, combination of two protons and two neutrons exist already inside the nucleus and this alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus by barrier penetration principle as a barrier uh, penetration or you can say the tunneling effect we have studied in quantum mechanics using the idea of barrier penetration or tunneling effect Gamow developed his theory now the second notion of this theory is that the alpha particle inside the nucleus is always in a constant motion and the potential barrier actually prevents the alpha particle from es 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 escaping but according to quantum mechanics there will be always a finite probability of transmission through the uh, potential barrier although the height of the potential barrier is greater than the energy of the alpha particle but according to quantum mechanics or tunneling effect there will be a finite probability of transmission actually in this theory we will calculate the probability uh, which is actually found of penetration the next uh, notion of this theory is that there is a small but definite probability as i have told you that the alpha particle may tunnel through the barrier each time a collision it suffers whenever the alpha particle will incident on the potential barrier there will be a finite probability of transmission in accordance with the 
tunneling effect or the barrier penetration theory of quantum mechanics so uh, in this figure you can see i have shown the variation of the potential energy in against of the distance between the center of the daughter nucleus this is your daughter nucleus daughter nucleus means when alpha particle will be emitted from a nucleus of atomic number z then we get a daughter nucleus whose uh, atomic number is z minus 2 and uh, this is your alpha particle and uh, the distance between the alpha particle and the daughter nucleus is r so how the potential or potential energy of this alpha particle varies with this r this has been shown in this figure you have actually say, seen uh, seen the concept of uh, this figure in the previous lecture too in fact uh, here uh, you can see there is a potential well of depth minus u naught and this potential well is termin terminated to the height of the potential barrier which is actually coulomb potential given by v equal to 2zd e square over 4 pi epsilon naught r here you know zd is actually the uh, zd is actually equal to this z minus 2 which is the atomic number of the daughter nucleus and you have seen in the previous lecture that this uh, uh, this maximum value of v is almost equal to 25 mega electron volt to 28 mega electron volt slightly differing from uh, nucleus to nucleus now uh, when uh, we consider that our alpha particle has kinetic energy e which you can see in this figure which is less than the height of this potential barrier then classical physics says that this alpha particle will remain trapped inside the nucleus it cannot escape but according to quantum mechanics when we actually uh, study the barrier penetration theory then you see that uh, even when the energy of the particle is uh, smaller than the height of the potential barrier even then there is a finite probability of transmission in fact in this figure i have shown that at this point the distance is equal to capital r which is actually the radius of the nucleus and at this point uh, r is equal to b and what is this b actually at this point the potential energy of uh, uh, the potential energy b of r is just equal to the kinetic energy of the alpha particle so this point if you consider that this point is p this point corresponds that uh, corresponds the point for which v of r v of r means v of b is just equal to e now you can see this figure this this variation is actually of the wave function wave function in the first region that is inside the nucleus this is actually oscillatory and between uh, a small r equal to capital r and uh, b that is in this region where in fact uh, r is less or equal to r and this is less or equal to b you can see that the wave function is actually exponentially decaying and once the alpha particle will reach to this point this will actually escape from the nucleus and again in this third region the wave function is actually oscillatory which actually implies that this alpha particle will now not return back okay so actually the proper theory needs the idea of barrier penetration which you study in quantum mechanics so i have not uh, discussed the problem of barrier penetration here but uh, you can see any standard book on quantum mechanics and you have definitely studied it and you can also see my videos on quantum mechanics where you will find the problem on barrier penetration in fact 
in the in, in this figure you can see i have shown a one dimensional potential barrier uh, <coughs> whose width is actually equal to l here i have mentioned x equal to 0 and here x equal to l so this is a potential barrier uh, whose width is equal to l and a l an alpha particle or any particle you can say is incident from this region uh, where v is equal to 0 this is actually the region where wave function we have assumed is psi 1 and uh, if this uh, alpha particle has energy e which is less than the barrier height as you can see from this figure then when this alpha particle will, will incident on this uh, uh, barrier there will be uh, a reflection of the alpha particle and also transmission according to quantum mechanics although classically this particle should be completely reflected but quantum mechanics says you know the particle will have a finite probability of transmission but between x equal to 0 and x equal to l that is in, in this second region where wave function has been assumed psi 2 this psi 2 is actually exponentially decaying psi 1 that is wave function is first region is oscillatory and the wave function in the second region that is between x equal to 0 and x equal to l which we have assumed psi 2 this is exponentially decaying exponentially decaying I have not uh, actually solved the Schrodinger equation you can see the any standard textbook on quantum mechanics and again at this boundary that is x equal to l when alpha particle will be in will incident there will be a finite probability of transmission but once the alpha particle is landed in this third region where the wave function psi 3 is again oscillatory this will be never returned back and that is called alpha decay so after this x equal to l the alpha particle will be emitted from the nucleus so in this third region psi 3 is again oscillatory so actually if you want to calculate the transmission probability of alpha particle you have to set up schrodinger equation for these three regions and solve it and after solving the schrodinger equation you can find that transmission probability t but uh, i have not solved that schrodinger equation back because that that is not the basic problem of gamow's theory gamow's had has utilized the result of this barrier penetration and then explained the decay of alpha particle so actually i have mentioned here directly what is the result for the transmission probability as i have told you you can see my video on in quantum mechanics on this barrier penetration or you may also consult any standard textbook on in a quant, in qu of quantum mechanics to see this problem in fact when you uh, study the tunnel effect when uh, we consider that the beam of particles of kinetic energy e is incident on a rectangular potential barrier of height v where the energy of the particle is less than v then according to quantum mechanics the particle will be not completely reflected but there will be a probability of transmission and what is that probability of transmission it is given by this formula i have not derived this result i am telling you so many times but uh, you can see this result in your quantum mechanics textbook so transmission probability t is equal to 16 e times v minus e over v square times e raised to the power e raised to the power minus 2 gamma l in fact in this expression l you can see is the width of the barrier and gamma this is equal to 2m times v minus e over h bar square whole to the power half okay now 
in fact uh, in this expression one which is for the transmission probability this factor inside the square bracket that is the energy dependent coefficient this is almost equal to unity or you can say this is of the order of unity in fact the maximum value of this coefficient of energy term is equal to 4 maximum value is 4 and its order is almost equal to 1 so actually in this expression for t this exponential term is the dominating term so Gamow in his theory assumed approximately that the transmission probability is almost equal to e to the power minus 2 gamma l taking the order of uh, uh, this energy term 1 uh, Gamow assumed that t is almost equal to e to the power minus 2 gamma l if your aim is just to calculate the order of transmission so i have mentioned here that the do here the dominant term is the exponential term e to the power minus 2 gamma l the energy dependent coefficient is of the order of unity for the order of magnitude calculation so we can write t equal to e to the power minus 2 gamma l now uh, gamma you can see it is equal to this much so you can write it e to the power minus 2l root over 2m times v minus e over h bar square okay now in fact in case of alpha particle inside the nucleus the width of the the height of the barrier is not constant in fact as you can see uh, the variation of the potential energy and this curve you can see is like this so in fact the height of the potential barrier in this case is not constant in fact uh, you can take uh, this like this these are the different heights and so inside the nucleus the potential uh, height of potential barrier is not constant as uh, it has been shown in the previous figure so in this case you can say that this l is not constant so in the present situation when we uh, consider that the alpha particle inside the nucleus faces a barrier with varying height in that condition uh, how we can use this expression so for this let us consider uh, we take the logarithm of this equation one so ln t will be what this will be minus 2 gamma l ln e but ln e is equal to 1 so ln t is equal to minus 2 gamma l and as i have told you that in the present situation the alpha particle faces a barrier of varying height so actually this gamma is also distance dependent it is not constant because v is not constant in this case so actually this equation ln t equal to minus 2 gamma l can be written like this ln t equal to minus 2 integral of gamma r with respect to r from 0 to l but uh, you can see as uh, we as uh, this <coughs> alpha particle will be when at the surface of the nucleus and uh, a point where r is equal to b where in fact uh, the energy of the alpha particle is equal to b b so after this point you can say that alpha particle gets escaped so uh, for the escaping process actually the variation of r will be from this capital r from the surface of the nucleus to a point where e becomes equal to b 
because where e will be equal to v after that classical physics also allows that alpha particle will not return back so actually this limit 0 to l will be changed by r to b okay i hope you have understand why this limit has been changed actually here you can see this r is the radius of the nucleus and b is what as i have told you this is distance from the center of the nucleus at which potential energy v is equal to kinetic energy of the alpha particle now for r greater than b when r is greater than b then you can see e is greater than b you can see this figure when in fact r is equal to b you can see the energy e is equal to b but when r is greater than b let us consider this point at this point r is greater than b and here the potential energy is actually equal to this much and energy is equal to this much so in this case you can see that potential energy is less than the kinetic energy of the alpha particle so when if, when the alpha particle will be landed in this region which is r greater than b then even the classical mechanics allows the alpha particle to escape from the nucleus so i have mentioned it here that e greater than b for r greater than b so if it can get passed to b the alpha particle will have permanently escaped from the nucleus okay now what will be the potential energy of an alpha particle at a distance r from the center of the daughter nucleus that potential energy is actually simply given by the coulombian potential energy you can see there is a daughter nucleus and you know the daughter nucleus has the charge number or atomic number z minus 2 and uh, there is uh, this is your alpha particle and uh, the charge of the daughter nucleus will be what since the number of protons in its nucleus is z minus 2 and charge of one proton is e so charge of this daughter nucleus is z minus 2 into e and charge of the alpha particle is plus 2 e so, so there will be a repulsion and potential energy will be positive and if the distance between these two is r then according to uh, uh, the electrostatic potential energy formula you know this v of r will be equal to 2e into zde zd means z minus 2 that is this is the atomic number of the daughter nucleus and z is the atomic number of the parent nucleus so this is 2 zde square over 4 pi epsilon naught r okay so uh, the expression for gamma you have seen this is a square root of 2m over h bar square v minus e now in this expression we will substitute the value of v potential energy v which we have uh, actually obtained here so you can write it 2m over h bar square whole to the power half and instead of v you can write 2 zde square over 4 pi epsilon naught r and minus e and whole to the power half but uh, as you know at r equal to b b is equal to e b is equal to e so the value of e will be what this will be just equal to b but only when r is equal to b so the expression for e you can write just in terms of the expression for potential energy simply replacing r by b so what will be e this is 2 zde square over 4 pi epsilon naught into b so in this expression for the value of gamma we can replace this e by this expression so you can write gamma equal to 
टू एम ओवर एच बार स्क्वायर होल टू दी पावर हाफ टाइम्स टू जेड डी ई स्क्वायर ओवर फोर पाइपसेल नॉट आर माइनस टू जेड डी ई स्क्वायर ओवर फोर पाइपसेल नॉट इन टू बी यू कैन सी ई इज इक्वल टू दिस मच नाउ दिस टू जेड डी ई स्क्वायर ओवर फोर पाए एप्सल एन नॉट बी स्क्वायर रूट वी हैव टेकन एज ए कॉमन फैक्टर सो यू कैन सी गामा कैन बी रिटर्न एज टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ टू एम ओवर एच बार स्क्वायर टाइम्स टू जेड डी स्क्वायर ओवर फोर पाए एप्सल एन नॉट बी टाइम्स बी ओवर आर माइनस वन होल टू द पावर हाफ इज इट ओके Now, two z d e square over four pi epsilon not b. This is simply e. You can see it here. So this expression can be written as a square root of two m e by h bar square into b over r minus one whole to the power half. So we have obtained the expression for this gamma as a function of r, and now. After obtaining the value of gamma as a function of r, you can substitute this value in this equation number four, and then you can evaluate this integral because we have obtained the value of gamma of r as a function of r. You have obtained this. So now let us put this value of gamma in the in the equation four, and so you can see ln t is equal to minus two. I have repeated just the result. Integral from r to b, gamma of r dr. Now substitute the value of gamma of r which we have just obtained. So this will be minus two, two m e over h bar square whole to the power half integral r to b, b over r minus one whole to the power half dr. Okay. Now for Evaluating this integral, you have to uh, follow a substitution method. And remember it: if you want to integrate this, uh, or you can evaluate this, uh, if you want to evaluate this integral, you must remember that if we will put the r in this suitable form, then the evaluation of integral will be easy. So remember it. For evaluating this integral, we put. R equal to b times cos square theta. Now see, if R is b times cos square theta, what will be dr? This will be what? This will be minus two b cos theta sine theta d theta. Okay, we have taken the differential of this cos square theta, and this is a simple differential, so you understand it. Now, we will uh, actually replace this R. By this expression, in this equation six, and dr by this expression in this equation six, but at the same time we have uh, we have to find what will be the limits then. So let us find the limits for this integral. As you can see, the lower limit is r. So when r will be equal to capital R, then what will be cos theta? Put this here. R will be replaced by b. R, sorry, R will be replaced by capital R. So you can see, cos square theta will be equal to what? That will be R by b, and so cos theta will be root over R by b, and so theta will be equal to cos inverse root over R by b. Okay. Now, for obtaining the upper limit. We will substitute r equal to b, and you can see it here. When r will be equal to b, cos square theta will be one, and cos square theta equal to one, so cos theta will be also one, and cos theta is one, so theta will be equal to zero. So now we will substitute all these values in this equation six to evaluate this integral. So you can see. ln t will be equal to minus 2 times root over 2 me by h bar square an integral limits will be what the lower limit you can see is cos inverse 
root over r by b and the upper limit is 0. So I have put those limits. Now see the expression b over r. See here if you want to find b over r what will be that? b over r will be equal to 1 over cos square theta and that will be equal to sec square theta. Okay. So b by r is equal to sec square theta and minus 1 whole to the power half and dr. See here dr is minus 2b cos theta sin theta d theta. So instead of dr uh, I have written here minus 2b cos theta sin theta d theta. Now you know from trigonometry that sec square theta minus 1 is simply equal to tan square theta and due to this square root that will be simply equal to tan theta. Now b is a constant here so it can be taken outside of the integral and due to this minus sign we can interchange the limits and then the result will be positive. So making these things uh, uh, into account you can see it here that ln t can be written as minus 2 a square root of 2 mu over h bar square times b and inside the integral will be what 2 tan theta sin theta cos theta d theta and as I have omitted the minus sign so the limits has been interchanged the lower limit is now upper limit and upper limit is now lower limit okay now if you write tan theta equal to sin theta over cos theta then this cos theta will cancel and so there will be only 2 sin square theta so your result is this much uh, inside the integral the, now there is 2 sin square theta and from trigonometry you know 2 sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta okay now you can integrate it easily 1 integral of 1 with respect to theta that will be simply theta and integral of cos 2 theta that is uh, sin 2 theta by 2. So this is minus 2 square root of 2 me over h bar square times b and theta minus sin 2 theta by 2 and limits are 0 and cos inverse root over r by b. Now substitute the limits when you will put the upper limit then at the place of theta this will be cos inverse i square root of r by b and now before that we will simplify it you know sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta into cos theta and divided by it. so this will cancel out so uh, in fact uh, in a further step we will write uh, this expression like this this is theta minus cos theta sin theta and limits are this now put the limits this is just a simple mathematics you can understand it so this is minus 2 times 2 me over h bar square whole to the power half times b and now put the limit when we will substitute the upper limit instead of theta we will write cos inverse root over r by b and minus cos theta you know cos a, a th instead of theta we will write what cos cos inverse root over r by b and you know cos cos inverse theta is equal to simply equal to theta so this is root over r by b and sin theta this is in fact 1 uh, sin theta this will be 1 minus cos theta 1 minus cos square theta square root so this is 1 and cos square theta that will be equal to r by b and whole square root so I have put it here the power half okay 
how the limits has been uh, substituted here you have understand definitely now when you will put the lower limit then both of these terms will be zero because when theta is zero this theta will be zero and cos zero times sine zero and sine zero is zero so after substituting the lower limit both of these terms will be zero so your final result is minus 2 times root over 2 m e over h bar square times b times cos inverse root over r by b minus root over r by b times 1 minus r by b square root okay now in fact uh, our potential barrier is relatively very wide so in this condition you can say that this b where actually e is equal to b that distance is actually much greater than the nuclear radius and if b is much greater than nuclear radius then cos inverse root over r by b that will be simply equal to what that will be pi by 2 minus root over r by b okay and 1 minus r by b whole to the power half that will be simply equal to 1 why because b is much greater so this r by b will be much smaller than 1 so 1 minus r by b is a square root that will be simply equal to 1 so making these substitutions in this equation 7 what will be our result you can see easily so ln t will be equal to minus 2 root over 2 m e over h bar square times b and instead of this cos inverse root over r by b we will write this pi by 2 minus root over r by b so see the algebra this will be pi by 2 minus root over r by b instead of this cos inverse r root over r by b i have written it and this factor 1 minus r by b whole to the power half has been 1 and this r by b to the power half remains here so this is minus r by b whole to the power half so you can see this minus r by b whole to the power half minus r by b whole to the power half so this will be two times r by b whole to the power half so uh, this is your result okay so ln t we have obtained is like this now see now if you are talking about the point where r is equal to b then you have okay so at the point where r is equal to b you can see that b is equal to this much because at this point you have seen that b is equal to e and so b is equal to this much we have already seen this now when we will substitute the value of this b uh, in this expression in this expression then after some simplification which i have not done here you can see the expression will be like this ln t will be equal to 4 e over h bar times m over pi epsilon not whole to the power half zd to the power half r to the power half minus e square over epsilon not h bar times m over 2 to the power half zd into e to the power minus half actually you can do the algebra and uh, after that you will get this result i have not uh, done all those algebra that will be just a pure mathematics and you can do it easily so i have left it now 
in this expression you can see e is a universal constant h bar is a universal constant m is actually mass of the alpha particle which has definite value epsilon not this is a permittivity of free space it has it is also a universal constant so after substituting the numerical values of all the universal constants in this expression when you will simplify the result then you will get this i have not substituted all the numerical value you should also remember it but you can do it after substituting the numerical values of all the constants you will get ln t equal to 2.97 Jd to the power half times r to the power half minus 3.95 Jd into e to the power minus half. Now you know the nuclear radius r is equal to r naught a to the power one by three. So in this expression, in first term where there is r to the power half, that will be replaced by r naught a to the power one by three. so after making this substitution our result which has been defined here now becomes like this ln t equal to 3.26 times jd into a to the power 1 by 3 whole to the power half minus 3.95 jd e to the power minus half okay this is actually a, an important result now actually we will find this uh, transmission probability in terms of the decay constant uh, in fact uh, our alpha particle moves inside the nucleus and collides with the wall of the nucleus and you can see that uh, between two successive collisions if uh, yeah or uh, see here this is the diameter of the nucleus which is 2r and uh, if you consider that an alpha particle uh, starts from this point let us say a moves towards the um, other wall and it will collide here the surface of the nucleus and rebound and uh, again it will reach to the point a so between two successive collisions with the wall the alpha particle describes a distance 2r between two successive collisions the alpha particle will describe a distance 2r so what will be actually the collision frequency it means number of collision per second will be what since uh, the speed of alpha particle we have assumed v not so time taken per collision if you consider that time taken per collision is t then this time taken per collision will be 2r divided by v not so in this time t there will be one collision there will be one collision so you can find that in this time t there is one one collision in this time t so in one second how many collision will take place this will be 1 by t and 1 by t will be v not by 2r so collision frequency that is the number of collisions suffered by the alpha particle with the wall of the nucleus is given by nu and that nu will be equal to v not divided by 2r okay now in fact the product of the collision frequency and the transmission probability this is actually equal to the decay constant or you can say the probability of alpha particle emission from a heavy nucleus by tunneling that is decay constant is given by lambda equal to nu into t okay now what will be the value of nu you can estimate it nu is v not over 2r and v not is the speed of alpha particle and we assume that the motion of the alpha particle is non relativistic and so its kinetic energy e will be equal to half m v not square and so from here you can see that this v not will be equal to 
टू ई डिवाइडेड बाय एम्स स्क्वायर रूट ओके सो इन स्टीड ऑफ भी नॉट आई हैव रिटर्न हियर टू ई ओवर एम्स स्क्वायर रूट एंड ओवर टू आर नाउ इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन अगेन दिस आर विल बी रिप्लेस्ड बाय आर नॉट इन टू ए टू दावर वन बाय थ्री दिस आर विल बी रिप्लेस्ड बाय दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड आर नॉट यू नो दिस हैज ए फिक्सड वैल्यू दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट वन पॉइंट टू फेमटोमीटर सो एंड एम इज मास ऑफ हेल्फा पार्टिकल सो वेन द न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू ऑफ मास ऑफ हेल्फा पार्टिकल एंड दिस कॉन्स्टेंट आर नॉट विल बी सब्सटीट्यूटेड हियर देन आफ्टर सिंप्लीफिकेशन यू विल गेट न्यू इक्वल टू इन फैक्ट रूट ओवर ई ओवर ए टू दी पावर वन बाय थ्री टाइम्स टू पॉइंट नाइन इंटू टेन टू दी पावर ट्वेंटी वन सेकेंड इनवर्स सो दिस इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द कॉलिजन ऑफ एल्फा पार्टिकल विद द वॉल ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस एंड दिस फ्रीक्वेंसी यू कैन सी ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन द एनर्जी ऑफ द एल्फा पार्टिकल एंड द मास नंबर और टोटल नंबर ऑफ न्यूक्लियंस इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस नाउ लेट एस टेक द लॉगरिथम ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन नंबर नाइन सो वट विल बी एल एन लेमडा एल एन लेमडा विल बी इक्वल टू एल एन न्यू प्लस एल एन टी ओके नाउ न्यू इज इक्वल टू दिस मच यू कैन सी इट हियर सो दिस विल बी वट दिस विल बी एल एन टू पॉइंट नाइन इंटू टेन टू दी पावर ट्वेंटी वन टाइम्स ई टू दी पावर हाफ टाइम्स ए टू दी पावर माइनस वन बाय थ्री एंड प्लस now ln t we have already calculated in this equation number 8 so let us substitute the value of this ln t in that expression so after substituting the value of ln t you can see this will be 3.26 times zd a zd a to the power 1 by 3 whole to the power half minus 3.95 zd e to the power minus half okay now let us see if we want to express that expression on the base of 10 then what will happen you know if you express uh, the expression in the base of 10 in a stead of uh, base e then you have to multiply by 3.2.303 and after multiplication you will get log lambda to the base 10 equal to 20.46 plus ln e to the power half a to the power minus 1 by 3 to the base 10 minus 1.72 zd e to the power minus half plus 1.4 zd a to the power 1 by 3 whole to the power half again i have not simplified it you can see that after changing the base uh, from exponential to 10 then you will get this result okay now you should remember that the changes in atomic number and nuclear radius are in fact very small it is negligible compared to the changes in energy so this expression a can be approximated like this this is log lambda to the base 10 equal to c plus d e to the power minus half d e to the power minus half in fact uh, uh, you can see that in the first term there is actually uh, a presence of a in the last term there is again a presence of a and as i have mentioned it here that the change in atomic number and nuclear radius this is very small this is negligible so this term and this term will be neglected and in stead of this constant 20.46 i have written here c and only the term uh, this term that is minus 1.72 zd 
e to the power minus half remains here and instead of this minus 1.72 z d uh, this d has been written okay so this c and d are constants actually according to this equation b you can see that this equation shows that the emitters having lesser decay constant emits alpha particle of greater energy it means the nucleus which will have a, a smaller decay constant lambda is small a lambda is small and you know the half period of uh, half half period is given by ln 2 divided by lambda so if lambda is small half period or you can say the half life will be very small very large so you can say that the emitters having the lesser decay constant or the larger uh, half life or larger mean life you can say that will emit alpha particle of greater energy and this fact is nothing this fact is simply known as geyser nuttall law so on the basis of gamow's theory you can see we can derive the geyser nuttall law and geyser nuttall law is actually experimentally verified law so since the gamow's theory agrees with geyser nuttall law so this is just a, an experimental proof of this gamow's theory so i hope you have understand the, the gamow's theory of alpha decay so now in the forthcoming lecture we will see the another decay uh, processes which are actually beta decay and gamma decay